She had been missing for two years without anyone noticing. She was only five the last time that she was seen. What happened to Harmony and where did she go? Hey there, welcome or welcome back. I'm Cassie and this is A Wicked World. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the long ongoing Harmony Montgomery case from New Hampshire. This case very recently had some new breakthroughs because there was an affidavit from the court that was recently unsealed. There was a ton of information on this case as I was going through, and it was very difficult for me to put it together because it just feels so close to home. I live about 40, 45 minutes away from Manchester, New Hampshire, where all of this happened. And while I was sitting at my computer, pulling up pictures of Harmony, for this video, my almost four-year-old daughter came and sat next to me and she pointed at the screen and said, Mama, she looks like me. So having a daughter around the same age as Harmony is just heartbreaking and hearing her say that thinking, oh my God, if that was my daughter. Well, on that note, this is the story of Harmony Montgomery. Harmony was born June 7, 2014 in Massachusetts to her parents, Crystal Sorry and Adam Montgomery. When she was born, Crystal was actually an active addict and her and Adam were no longer together. Adam was actually in jail at the time of Harmony's birth. He was serving time because he had shot a man in the head during a drug deal in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Off to a good start. He actually ended up pleading guilty in this case to assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, carrying a firearm without a license, discharging a firearm within 500 feet of a building, and larceny from a person. He was sentenced to only 18 months in jail. So soon after Harmony's birth, he was released again. As you can tell, sweet little Harmony was not born into the greatest life. She was really never given a fair chance from day one because of her parents. But looking at the pictures of Harmony, you would never know that that was her situation because she's smiling in all of them. She looks happy and that breaks my heart even more thinking that this little girl could still put on a smile and seem happy with all the things that were going on in her life. It's said that Harmony was a very independent little girl and it started when she was just a toddler. She liked to read books, she loved playing with dolls and Barbies, and she was very social and loved to play with kids her age all the time. She was described as charming and very active. She was a sweet girl and she was known to be very empathetic as well. When she was younger and in one of her foster homes, she had access to a vegetable garden and she loved going out there and picking the vegetables. Now, Harmony was actually born legally blind in one eye and she had a few other special needs as well. Now, when Harmony was born, Crystal ended up having sole custody as, like I said, Adam was still in jail. However, it didn't take very long for DCF to come and remove her from Crystal's home because there were reports of neglect. At only two months old, Harmony was placed in foster care for the first time. She kept getting bounced back and forth between foster care and her mother's home. Her mother would straighten up a little bit and then there would be reports of neglect again and she would go back to a foster home. And this happened quite a few times. So this poor little girl didn't have a stable environment from day one. This happened until Harmony was four years old. Once Adam was out of jail, he married a girl that he had met back in high school and her name was Kayla. She soon became Kayla Montgomery. I'm not sure what her maiden name was. The two of them got married on June 7th, 2017, which ironically is Harmony's birthday, June 7th. The two of them have three children together. In February of 2019, Adam Montgomery was given sole custody of Harmony by the Lawrence, Massachusetts Juvenile Court. Adam had had around 40 hours of supervised visits with Harmony, as well as a reunification plan. However, DCF failed to check Adam's background, where Adam was living, where Adam was employed, and they also failed to check to see if Adam was able to handle Harmony's special needs. Since they didn't check for any of this before giving Adam custody, I really doubt they checked anything because those seem like the most important things to me. What did they check is the question that I have. Harmony's mom, Crystal, was supposed to show up for the review and the redetermination of Harmony's custody. Unfortunately, she was not able to because she was in a different court on a care and protection case in regards to Harmony's half-brother. Even though she was unable to make it because of something that was also very important and was a court hearing, Adam's case moved on anyways. Had she been there, 
she might have been given custody because at this point, Crystal says that she was clean. I don't think that that would have necessarily been the best home for Harmony either, but it might have been a little bit better than what Adam gave her. Crystal's willingness and fitness to have Harmony in her custody was never even explored. They never even touched on the issue. They also never assessed Kayla, Adam's wife, as part of Harmony being in his custody. I mean, of course they didn't. They didn't look at really anything as far as Adam goes, so why would they look at anything as far as Kayla goes? They didn't care from the sounds of it. It sounded like they were done with her case. She was four years old, she'd been in the system for four years, and they wanted to wrap it up. I mean, I don't know for sure, but that's what it sounds like. The home that Harmony was given to was not a safe home. Kayla and Adam were both active addicts. They also had two other children that were living in the home as well. There were constantly people coming in and out, buying drugs, bringing in weapons. It was not a good place for children. And like I said, DC have never checked any of this. Had they checked, maybe this wouldn't have happened. It said the part of the reason why these checks weren't done is because the hearing for Harmony's custody was done in Massachusetts and Adam lived in Manchester, New Hampshire. And this might have been why some of the checks weren't done. It just got overlooked because it was a state to state case. There's really no excuse for it, but I believe that that is part of what happened. So let's talk about Adam for a minute. Adam Montgomery is a huge piece of shit. And that is a fact. New Hampshire governor actually described him as a monstrous drug dealer with previous convictions, including shooting someone in the head and a separate armed attack on two women. Adam's long criminal history started when he was just a teenager. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of his criminal history. There's honestly so much though that I can't even get into all of it. And they gave this man custody of a child. Multiple children actually. He had custody of a few children and nobody did a goddamn thing about it. When Adam was only 16, this is around the time that his criminal history started. So in 2006 he was living in Bedford, Massachusetts. And he was charged with having a dangerous weapon on school grounds. The next year, in July of 2007, Adam was accused of following a 15-year-old girl home. After shouting that she had stolen his cell phone, he followed her into her front door. He was charged with burglary and misdemeanor simple assault. This case was later dropped. In September of 2007, the Bedford police charged Adam with criminally threatening his former girlfriend with a knife. He was sentenced to 110 days in jail for this. Adam was charged with stabbing somebody in the leg and pushing him out of a moving vehicle near Bridge and Belmont Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. The incident supposedly happened because of a drug ripoff in which Adam believed he was sold fake drugs. He only served 383 days of his four year sentence. In New Hampshire alone, Adam has 21 items listed in his criminal history. And that's not even including some of the ones with Harmony now. Adam didn't just stick to getting in trouble in New Hampshire though. He also came down to my neck of the woods, Massachusetts, and started creating chaos down here as well. Actually, his most violent crimes occurred in Massachusetts. In 2008, he was convicted of a robbery where he burst into an apartment in Malden, Massachusetts and demanded money from a woman at gunpoint. He pled guilty to armed robbery and assault and battery with a deadly weapon. And there was also the one, like I said earlier, of the man that he shot in the head. There's been other ones, but I can't get into all of them. There's plenty more. Just one of these things on his criminal history should have set off, hey, let's not give him a child, but they didn't even look, so they didn't know. Now, once Harmony was in Adam's custody, Crystal would video call from time to time to say hi to Harmony. The last time that Crystal remembers seeing her, however, was around Easter of 2019. And she said that at that time, she could see Adam in the background of the video call and Harmony seemed frightened. After that, Adam and his wife Kayla blocked Crystal on everything, their phones, social media, she couldn't get a hold of them. So on July 29th of 2019, DCYF received an anonymous call alleging that there was abuse of harmony in Adam's home. We later found out that this anonymous call was actually Adam's uncle Kevin. Adam had admitted to his uncle Kevin that he had quote, bashed harmony around the house the other day. This happened after an incident when Adam stepped away from his baby for a minute and he asked Harmony to watch the baby while he went to the bathroom or dealt drugs or whatever it might be. 
and the baby started crying. Well, Harmony, just being a little girl of four or five, didn't know any better, and she didn't want her dad to get angry at her, I'm sure. So she took her hand and she put it over the baby's mouth to make the baby stop crying. Adam walked back into the room, saw this, and got so angry that he started beating poor little Harmony and gave her a black eye. A child protective service worker was sent out to the home after this. However, emails to the Manchester police said that there was no black eye observed. I don't know if they waited too long and it had already healed or what the situation was, but they did not witness a black eye on Harmony at the time. On August 7th of 2019, a child protective service worker went to the house again just to check on things. The worker noted that there was a red mark near Harmony's eye, as well as faded bruising under her eyelid. Adam said that the mark was just caused by another child hitting her with a toy. And Harmony said, yeah, that's what happened as well, because, you know, she's not going to say anything else in front of her dad who hits her and punches her. The final visit from Child Protective Services while they were living in the current house that they were living, which was on Guildford Street in Manchester, came in October of 2019. The worker then reported that all the children looked happy and healthy. In January of 2020, DCYF received a report. When DCYF at this point asked Adam about Harmony, he reported that she had been living in Massachusetts with her mother, Crystal, since Thanksgiving 2019, a few months prior. DCYF reportedly tried to contact Crystal and confirm this. However, Crystal never ended up returning those phone calls. So she too clearly cares a whole lot. In January of 2021, as well as March of 2021, DCYF received additional reports concerning the Montgomery household, and they were both unrelated to Harmony. When DCYF asked Adam again about where Harmony was, he again reported that she was with Crystal in Massachusetts. On November 18th, 2021, Crystal Sorry made a call to the Manchester police to report that her daughter, Harmony, was missing. This had only come to light because the adoptive parents of Harmony's biological brother had been pushing to get the two of them together for a play date for almost a year. And they finally got very concerned and were like, what's going on? So finally, Crystal decided to call the Manchester police after not being able to find Harmony for almost a year and giving them excuses for an entire year. She finally called the police. Crystal also told the Manchester police at this point that the last time she had seen Harmony was on a video call around Easter of 2019. At this point, DCYF, tried to confirm Harmony's enrollment in a Manchester school. None of them said that she was enrolled. So at this point, the Manchester police began attempts to locate the Montgomery family. They were no longer living in the house that they had been prior and they couldn't find them. Five weeks later, on December 27th of 2021, DCYF informed the Manchester police that they were unable to locate Harmony and the police began their search for Adam. Soon after, Crystal also sent a letter to the Manchester mayor, Joyce Craig, requesting help to find Harmony. On December 31st of 2021, the Manchester police announced to the public Harmony's disappearance. And that day the search began. On that same day, Kayla Montgomery was brought in to speak with detectives. And the police also located Adam, who was found sleeping in a car. At this time, the police described Adam as being completely uncooperative and hostile. They were asking him, where Harmony was. They said, you're not in trouble. We just want to know where Harmony is. And he told them either arrest me or I'm leaving and would not give them any information. What's your name, my man? Wow. Adam. Adam. This police body cam video obtained by News 9 Investigates was taken on December 31st, 2021, the day Manchester police announced a missing persons investigation for Harmony Montgomery. On top of your head. This was the first interaction between Adam Montgomery and Manchester police after officers located him sleeping in a car in Manchester's Wolf Park. In the video, officers ask Montgomery about his daughter's whereabouts. You just need to find out where she is. That's all I'm concerned about. I mean, you're not in any trouble right now that I know of. Okay. You have no warrants. Okay. So, where's your daughter so we can check on her and make sure that she's in okay. right, right now? I have nothing to say about her. But that's not what I'm, I'm just asking okay. where she is. I, I have nothing to say. The interaction lasts about 45 minutes before Montgomery is sent on his way. Police track Montgomery down again later that day, serving him with a court order to produce Harmony. Some detectives want to speak with you. You're just being detained at this point. During an interview with detectives, Montgomery is asked several times about his daughter. This isn't going to go anywhere. 
Like this isn't gonna stop. So no, I know it's not. So, no, so either get on the bus now or get run over. Well, I got nothing else to say. Luckily, a few days later, he did get arrested. The detective started asking Kayla when the last time she had seen Harmony was. She said that it was two days after Thanksgiving. Adam was actually driving her in to Dunkin' Donuts for her work shift. And during that drive to work, Adam supposedly told Kayla that he was dropping Harmony off that day at her mother's house. Kayla claimed that she hadn't seen Harmony since that day. Under oath, this is also what she told the grand jury. Adam had a friend named Matt Garcia that he had known for most of his life. Matt was dating a girl named Courtney O'Brien. Courtney said she had a conversation with Adam between late December of 2019 and mid-January of 2020, at which time Adam told her that Harmony was at her mother's because she kept pissing her pants all the time and he couldn't deal with it, and that she was better off with her mom anyways. Matt also spoke with Adam, and Adam said something very similar. He told him that Harmony had gone back to live with Crystal because she wouldn't stop pissing and shitting her pants. He said she was, quote, driving me nuts. We were living in the car, so I let her, I had her mom come and get her. If you remember earlier, he supposedly told Kayla that he was going to go to Massachusetts to drop her off, but now he's telling this person that her mom came and picked her up. Adam also said to Matt, Harmony was having accidents all the time, every five minutes, and he just couldn't deal with it anymore. Adam was arrested on charges related to Harmony on January 4th of 2020, and he was formally charged and arraigned the next day. The charges were second degree assault, relating to the time that he had given Harmony a black eye back in July of 2019, interference with custody, and two charges of endangering the welfare of a child. Now, police were already suspicious of Kayla's account, as Crystal was adamantly denying that she had custody of Harmony at any point during that time. The police had already spoken with Crystal's live-in boyfriend as well, and he said that Harmony had never lived with the two of them, and he actually had never even met Harmony in person. After contacting the Dunkin' Donuts that Kayla said that she was working at at the time in Manchester, New Hampshire, they found out that she was not working at that location at all. She had been working at a separate Dunkin' Donuts location in another part of New Hampshire. But when they called that Dunkin' Donuts, they found out that Kayla had actually been fired from that location a few days prior to when she said Adam had driven her in. It was actually prior to Thanksgiving that she had gotten fired, and she said that Adam drove her into work after Thanksgiving. So that wasn't lining up. An arrest warrant was obtained for Kayla, and she was charged with two counts of perjury. On June 3rd, 2022, police gave Kayla a plea deal if she would testify against Adam. And here's what she said happened to Harmony. Harmony lived with Adam, Kayla, and their children at 77 Guilford Street in Manchester until the family got evicted on November 27th, 2019, the day before Thanksgiving. Once they got evicted, the family started living in their car, which was a silver 2010 Chrysler Sebring. They were parking in the parking lot of the Colonial Village Apartments as they had a friend who lived there and he was letting them stay in the parking lot. So on the morning of December 7th, 2019, the family was on their way to Burger King to grab some breakfast. Harmony was in the back passenger side of the car and Adam was driving. Harmony had another bathroom accident, like Adam had claimed she was doing frequently. And Kayla said that after each accident that Harmony had been having, Adam was punching her in the face with a closed fist. She was a five-year-old in an abusive and unstable environment. Of course she was having accidents all the time. That's your fault, Adam. That's not hers. Punch your own self in the face, you idiot. So Adam, being the great guy he is, didn't consider any of this, of course. So that morning on their way to Burger King, Harmony had another accident. Well, Adam, even though he was driving, turned his full body around and hit Harmony with a closed fist to the face again. Over the course of the next couple minutes, he hit her again another two to three times, making a total of three to four blows to the face for this poor five-year-old. After his last blow hit, he said that he heard or felt something, and he told Kayla, I think I did something. I think I really hurt her this time. Kayla says that Harmony then made moaning sounds for about five minutes, and then it stopped. The family returned to the parking lot at the Colonial Village Apartments for about 20 minutes. Kayla says she doesn't remember what happened then, but after that, they left again. When they left the parking lot again, 
their car broke down shortly after. And this is the time where Kayla says that her and Adam discovered that Harmony was dead. At no time during this, between the time that Adam punched her in the face and the time that they found out she was dead, there was no talk whatsoever of getting medical help for her. Even though Adam knew he had done something serious, nobody thought about getting her help. Once Adam realized that she was dead, he went to the trunk and he emptied out his red and black Under Armour duffel bag. He then took Harmony's body and put it into the duffel bag. They then left the car to get towed and traveled back to the apartment complex. Now Kayla says they traveled back on foot and Adam carried the bag. But his friend Anthony, who lives there, said that somebody dropped them off. Anthony says once they arrived back, this time, he sold them fentanyl and crack. And he said that drugs seemed to be the couple's main concern at the time. At this point, Anthony also told the family that they could stay in his Audi that was out in the parking lot since they didn't have a car to sleep in anymore. So for the next couple nights, that's where the family slept. During this time, Adam would keep Harmony's body in the duffel bag in the trunk of the car but he would also take it out and put it in the snow sometimes as well to slow down the process of the decomposition and to not make Anthony's car stink. This started the movement of Harmony's body for the next few months. From mid-December to the end of December, the Montgomery's moved in with Kayla's parents. During that time, Harmony's body remained in the duffel bag and then was put inside a red and white cooler and that cooler was left out in the hallway of Kayla's parents' apartment. And it was left there for the entire two to two and a half weeks that they lived with her parents. Three weeks after Harmony was allegedly killed, the Montgomery's moved into an apartment at the family's in transition shelter. Kayla told police that Harmony was still in the duffel bag, but Adam took that bag and wrapped it up in a trash bag and then placed the bag in the ceiling vent above the bedroom. As her body started to decompose, it started leaking and smelling. So Adam took another trash bag and wrapped it in another trash bag. When maintenance came to check out the vent to see what was going on, Adam took Harmony's body out and put it in the closet while they were there. They said, oh, it must have just been a dead animal up there or something, but nothing's there now, so all good. Detectives accessed the ceiling vent where Kayla said that Adam had hid Harmony's body while they were living there and they discovered staining as well as a smell that was lingering. The entire ceiling grid was removed for DNA testing and it was found that that actually was Harmony's DNA. Kayla said that after they lived there, they moved to another apartment and this was at 644 Union Street in Manchester. She said Adam took the Under Armour duffel bag that was wrapped now in two trash bags and he put it into a plastic bin storage container, which was then pushed in a stroller from the family's in-transition shelter to the new apartment. There, Adam put the container in the closet of their new apartment. Kayla said that Adam at one point also took the Under Armour bag out of the plastic bin and noticed that it was leaking again. So he wrapped another trash bag around it and put it in the refrigerator at the apartment this time. Keep in mind, they also have two children with them, the couple, this entire time. Two other children that are probably scarred for life and traumatized now because of this. At some point after Harmony's body was placed into the refrigerator, Adam decided that he was gonna transfer it to a new bag because the Under Armour bag, I'm sure, was just was completely soaked from the decomposition of Harmony's body. Kayla said that at this point, Adam brought the bag with Harmony's body in it into the bathroom of their apartment. She said Adam spent four to six hours inside the bathroom with the shower running most of the time. Kayla said that after that, Adam placed Harmony's body into what she called a Catholic Medical Center maternity bag. This bag was a lot smaller than the Under Armour duffel bag, and it would likely not fit Harmony's body unless it was dismembered or grossly distorted. Kayla described the odor coming from the bathroom while Adam was doing this as well. Kayla said that she saw steam coming out from underneath the bathroom door, and then when Adam later left, she smelled ammonia and cleaning products. Adam took the CMC, the Catholic Medical Center, bag and placed it in the freezer at the apartment at that point. That same day, Adam had to go into work at his job at the Portland Pie Company, and he requested that Kayla take the CMC bag and bring it down to his work. He was going to store it in the freezer there. Yeah, he was going to store it at his work. His dead child's body, he's going to store in the freezer at his work. So what Kayla did is she took the bag out of the freezer containing Harmony's body and she put her two children into a stroller and placed the bag in between her kids 
and walked down to the Portland Pie Company to deliver the bag to Adam. I feel so bad for Harmony, but I also feel so bad for their other children because the things that those children must have seen is unbelievable. The bag stayed in the freezer of Adam's work for only a few days before he brought it home again. He brought it home because he wanted to put some lime inside of the bag to help with the decomposition of Harmony's body. Kayla explained that Adam dumped out the bag containing Harmony's body into the bathtub. Kayla said that Harmony wasn't just bones at this point. She still had hair, she still had her skin. You could still tell that it was the little girl. Adam put about half the bag of lime into the CMC medical bag. Kayla said that Adam had a difficult time getting Harmony's body back into the bag, as her body was still frozen as well. Kayla saw Adam running the hot water from the shower onto Harmony's body, trying to thaw it out so that he could bend it and get it back into the bag. He started squishing Harmony's flesh to try to pack it down further and get the ice out. Kayla said she helped cut Harmony's clothes off of her body to save space in the bag as well. Kayla describes Adam as pushing and pushing on her flesh until she heard a bang. She doesn't know what the bang was, but I'm guessing he broke some bones. Adam also banged the bag hard on the bathroom floor as well. After the bag was finally zipped shut, it went back into the apartment freezer again. Adam kept Harmony's body in the freezer at that apartment until sometime in the beginning of March, 2020. The family went to a hotel for two nights. At this point, Adam told his friend, Travis Beach, he was living at the Econo Lodge in Manchester, New Hampshire, because DCYF would not leave him alone. And he also told him that he needed to rent a U-Haul, but he couldn't do it because he didn't have a credit card or a debit card in his name. He probably did, but he didn't want to get caught, so he had his friend do it. Nice, huh? Adam convinced Travis and Travis's girlfriend, Brittany, to help him rent the U-Haul. Adam brought the CMC bag with Harmony's body in it to the hotel and placed it in the mini refrigerator in room 216. Kayla said that after the U-Haul was rented, Adam left in the middle of the night at around 1 a.m. Adam told her he was leaving and he would be back, but he didn't want to tell her where he was going in case something like this happened. And what he meant by that is in case Kayla started talking to the police, which she had. Adam had told Travis, his friend at this point, that he had done something bad and he had fucked up. Travis also said that he told him that he just needed to get rid of some stuff. Travis said that they might have gone to the west side of Manchester and possibly a road with the letter C. Not very helpful. The logs that were kept at the U-Haul store where the van was rented were looked at. And it was determined that the van was picked up at 549 on March 3rd, 2020 and returned at 147 p.m. the next day. The van traveled around 133 miles and recorded three toll violations in Massachusetts at the Tobin Bridge on March 4th at 4.44 a.m., 4.45 a.m., and 5.25 a.m. The U-Haul van that Adam used was actually sold at an auction in May of 2021. However, investigators were able to locate it and they swabbed it for blood. And there were chemical reactions that indicated that there was blood in a few spots throughout the van. It's yet to be heard if it was a match to Harmony's blood. Now, when Adam got back to the hotel, he got back around five or six o'clock in the morning. At this time, Kayla said he looked very tired and he reportedly told her, it's done. Kayla said that after that, she never saw the CMC bag again. Harmony's relatives later said that they had heard Adam would make her stand in the corner for hours on end, spank her, and make the five-year-old clean the toilet with her own toothbrush. He told me, he said, if I ever get her, you're never going to see her again. And I told, I told DCF this, I told them, you know, I said, that would be the biggest mistake you ever make because he hated women. He hated women. He hated his mother. His mother abandoned him. Like he had terrible history with women. He's a woman beater. Like I knew that he used to put his hands on me. Like I didn't want him to have any type of control over his daughter. In October of 2022, Adam was charged with one count of second degree murder for recklessly causing the death of Harmony Montgomery. The other charges against him are abuse of a corpse and for unlawfully removing, concealing, and destroying Harmony's body. His trial is scheduled for November of 2023.
Adam was also found guilty of six felony weapon charges in a case that happened earlier this month. And that alone will set him up for at least two decades in prison. Kayla initially pled not guilty, but later accepted a plea deal in which she agreed to testify against her estranged husband, Adam, in exchange for her sentence reduction or the dismissal of some charges. Kayla Montgomery was convicted of the two charges of perjury earlier this month for lying to the police. She was sentenced to a year and a half in prison. She's also agreed to cooperate with the prosecutors in regards to Adam's murder case. Kayla definitely had more to do with this than she's leaning on. So hopefully she ends up getting charged with more as more details come out about this case because two counts of perjury is definitely not enough. She assisted in cutting the clothes off of Harmony. She knew about this for years and didn't say or do anything. She even helped Adam at points move Harmony's body around Manchester. She definitely deserves a bigger punishment as well. What are your thoughts about Kayla Montgomery? On the one hand, she's gonna be the most important witness in the trial of Adam, um, but she's in the middle of all of this. She's in the middle of all of it and claims to not know where Harmony's remains are. What do you think? Um, I had, I had a lot of trouble with her throughout this case, um, because I'm a human, like, I'm a victim of domestic violence, especially, you know, by him, um, so I, I, I know <laughs> what she was going through with him, I know, you know, um, it still is not even a crumb of an excuse. Because if it had to be between me and a child, doesn't matter if it's a stranger, a stepchild, my boyfriend's child, my girlfriend's child, I don't care. If it had to be between me and a child, I'm going to choose me. So the fact that she didn't lift a finger to get her help, she did nothing, and then decided to just well, not only that, but, you know, she laid down and got pregnant by him while my daughter was somewhere stashed in this house. That's a little part that everyone else seems to miss, is that she did have a third child a month before they got ar arrested in, in 2021. She had a daughter. <laughs> Go figure, right? Um, and so it, it's, like, I think about all of those pieces, like, the only people that really think about though though everything is me and my family you know um a lot of people see what they see on social media or the tv or whatever but like i know these details you know um so that right there is just disgustingly sick like you watched him murder a child and then you laid down with him and had a another baby i'm and then you know the the piece of you know, her basically doing no time. Yeah. After she helped, she helped. No matter any way people want to put it, she helped. So due to the amount of miles that Adam traveled in the U-Haul van and the toll violations, investigators were able to approximate where Adam had driven. However, it was a very large area. The Massachusetts State Police and the Manchester Police were out scouring Route 107 just a few days ago. Harmony? has still not been found. Investigators actually went to the Union Street apartment as well and started searching the pipes. They removed some floor tile and they also took the fridge. The police were in Revere, Massachusetts, which is just north of Boston, and they were searching in the marshes um, out there as well. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's just an awful set of facts. There's the refrigerator being loaded onto the um, evidence wagon uh, being taken out of there. And I'll tell you, Vinny, all of us in the media were stunned to see that. Not only was poor Harmony abused in her life, she was abused in her death as well and treated like complete trash by her own father. She seemed like such a caring and happy little girl and despite her terrible circumstances, so many people would have loved to adopt that little girl. But Adam being the man that he is, had to take out his frustrations of his sad and broken life on this child a child he had gone to court for to gain custody of, a child that he posted pictures of on Facebook saying how much he loved her. Adam was never meant to be a father, 
and I hope that his other children come out of this situation okay and are placed with a loving family. Well, thank you for listening to all of Harmony's story. I'm sure there's going to be many more updates in this case, especially since it's not going to trial until November of this year. So if you would like me to make any follow-up videos as new details are released on the Harmony Montgomery case, just let me know and I can certainly do that. And don't forget, if you do like true crime, hit that subscribe button below. I also have a Patreon now where you can get exclusive videos and more. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description. All right, thanks for joining me today here on A Wicked World. Take care now, guys. Bye.